Good afternoon, everybody. <clears throat> this is Corey Olson, the Tolkien Professor. Join you. Welcome to Mythgard in Middle Earth. I'm Corey Olson, the Tolkien Professor. Uh, happy to join you as always. And as ever, I am accompanied by my friend Grifflet, who is here. Uh, yes, Grifflet is apparently uh, conspiring with the cattle. Um, don't let them catch you at that, man. You know, because uh, like you don't want them to suspect what's going to be coming here right up that hill is where the cows are going to be charging i'm fascinated with how low slung the cowbells in dunland are that seems like even a cow could get that off its neck but uh but anyway grifflet yeah so i see this so this cow is at least you're over here behind the tree right so probably they don't even see you right anyway try to keep it to yourself there bessie soon soon the liberation will come all right uh so uh grifflet has you but griffith come on now you've got other jobs to do so let's uh let's uh continue on our way here so um let's see we're looking for fried right good old fried <clears throat> uh who is this is him down here right the guy who is missing the, the with the lumber there you are okay so right we were somebody was worried about you griffith has been sent down to the lumber camp to try to sort things out i guess i can see why you're late that or you were just too worried to go through the insurgent cattle so we go hello to everybody here in the chat all right. Okay. Um, two hear me quests out, here. Devodiad, for okay. I have a tale to tell. Okay. So you've got stolen lumber when those horrid thieves attacked, and you don't mean the cows. Um, okay. So you we've got to get it back the lumber so that you can deliver your full shipment to Galtrev. Okay. You're afraid of the punishment of the overseers. Okay. All right. It uh, is not our custom to trust Devodiad. The dragon but clan. Perhaps you may be of help to me. So once again, we see more evidence of the same subplot, right? That is, so the dragon clan, who are on the one hand the staunchest allies of Saruman among all of the clans of Rohan, or excuse me, of Dunland, and yet we find that um, the dragon clan are continuously as also trying to sort of feather their own nests. They're obviously using their allegiance with Saruman uh, as a way for them to expand their own influence and become the dominant clan throughout Dunland. <clears throat> and in doing this, we see them thwarting Saruman in small ways, right? Um, we see them working, him, them actually working against the interests uh, of Saruman, uh, which, is, which is cool. So, oh yeah, sorry for... Those of you who are, uh, I know some of you are confused about start times because of daylight savings. Daylight savings is such a menace. I, I, ever since I've been running Signum, and so of course we're dealing with people in different countries and different time zones all over the place all the time. And uh, a daylight savings is like years ago became my least favorite thing. Um, so uh, yeah, and then of course that doesn't even count the people that are changing their clocks in the other direction <clears throat> right down in Australia and New Zealand so uh, anyway yeah it's um, and then the the, the, the the different times Matthias as well um, yeah exactly I, it's just I, clearly if we're going to do this it could be done a little bit more simply right but anyway okay uh, so but we're going to we're going to Griffith's going to wreak some vengeance on the dragon clan Here we go. Oh, wow. You guys are just hanging out all over the place here, huh? All right. Well, first things first. First things first. Natasha, let's see what we can do. Let's do some burgling. And... Oh! Failure! Oh, man. It's getting easier and easier for Grifflet here. 
Almost time to freeze his level, I think. I gotta keep. I gotta remember to do that. And burgle. What you got? Oh, I stole his hammer. A great hammer. Oh, that's pretty good. I mean, it doesn't look like that guy was carrying a great hammer, but when you pick somebody's uh, pick a great hammer from uh, somebody's pocket, though, right? I mean. That's pretty nice. I like that. Okay. Wait, Matthias, you used to be involved in the Calendar Consortium? That's kind of awesome, actually. <laughs> All right. We're collecting lumber that the evil dragon clan stole from the evil <laughs> the evil orc overseers but again here we are supporting the evil orc overseers uh, with lumber so as to help the oppressed dunlendings who are being pressed into service and keep them from getting punished for not delivering it a tricky situation oh and right these are the axes that we're supposed to collect and throw in the pond Right? Uh, this is Katrin's, Katrin's idea of a... Uh, this is our act of revolt. Right. Okay. They're just leaving their axes lying around. We're getting a bunch of it now. Okay, so... Oh, hey, Druid's Fire's here. Cool. Oops. I was just about to sneak up on that guy when this other guy attacked me from the rear. Um, so, uh, what else do you guys want to talk about? Do you have, do you have, do you have other lore questions for me today? Anything you guys would particularly like to discuss? Ooh, Matthias, you used to be a university sysadmin? Really? Filing that information away for future reference. <laughs> Okay. Oh, look, somebody else is here collecting wood. Okay. Um, all right. Sneak up again. Don't attack her. Trying to burgle her. Failing, but trying. Um. Okay. So yeah, so the political situation in Dunland here is is complex and interesting. You know, how to lead a revolt without just getting everybody else in trouble. So, because what we're trying to do is obviously not just destroy the Dunlendings. <clears throat> introduced in the books, because, you know, the role that the Dunlendings play in the book is interesting. Um, I mean, on the one hand, of course, they're bad guys, obviously. I mean, you know, they're the enemy, one of the enemies, at the Battle of Helm's Deep. Um, but, even there, <clears throat> they're depicted as being you know, dupes at least as much as, uh, as, you know, uh, villains, right? Um, so, all right, stealthify again. Um, 
whereas here, of course, the situation is being uh, is being expanded even more. Um, that is, the complexity of the situation is being expanded even more. Uh, so we're we're not we're you know we know from the book that you know the Dunlendings are being deceived by Saruman um, and recruited at least partially, uh, at least partially under false pretenses. But um, oh, okay, hang on. Looking for more bad guys. All right, there's another one. Um, and so here we get to, you know, as as is so often the case in Lotro, uh, and as is so much fun, um, you know, getting the chance to see sort of behind that, uh, which is really more like the end state of, of the situation, right? You know, where we get by the time we come to the Battle of Helm's Deep and see how that situation grows. So see the recruitment tactics of Saruman and the uh, both the so the, the, the clans that he is attempting to, that he has already converted, the ones that he is attempting uh, to bring along, um, and, uh, you know, the ones that he is sort of in the midst of convincing, and then, of course, the ones that are resisting and who are then being oppressed by him. Um, but, of course, Galtrev shows more than anything else the... Is this the way I'm supposed to throw axes into there we go. It's a good axe dumping location. Okay. Um, there we go. All right. Now I just need to get back up to fried. Hand this stuff in. Um, yeah. So anyhow, I I um, um, I think that it's 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 interesting to see how immediately the situation is worsened. Right. You know that that we have um, the oppression of the Dunlendings by Saruman, not only their deception, um, but the oppression and the role of the Dragon Clan in that. I think is is a really interesting story. You know, that essentially what he, the situation that he creates is the opportunity for, you know, thugs to get ahead. And since the Dragon Clan have this sort of thuggish attitude, they're, they're profiteers, essentially. You know, they're, um, they're, uh, taking advantage of the opportunity that, that, that Sarum, that their allegiance with Saruman gives them, uh, to move forward their own agenda of subjugating the rest of the clans, which is, of course, not entirely in Saruman's interest, as we've said. So uh, it creates a really interesting situation for us to kind of move in and try to undermine uh, Saruman among. It's uh, it's pretty cool. Um, okay, oh, hang on a second. We got to... Ah, Matias had a war question. Great. Okay. Very good. It's about elvish death. Excellent. Let's just talk about. I'll talk about that in just a second. Let me talk to Fried here. Greetings. There Will you, you go. Long? You are welcome for getting your wood back. Of course, your wagon looks in bad shape, but oh wait, I didn't. Oh, I thought I got all my dragon clan thieves, but I only got nine out of ten. Excuse me. Yeah, come over here. There we go. Okay. I was wondering why I only had one quest to return to him. Um, okay. Right. So. Uh, okay. There it is. Greetings. Brave warrior. Will stout you burglar. You have a stout heart, but it was foolish. Okay. That's right. I'm doing more to protect you than the white hand is. I have not seen your kind before. I'm kind to come and help you, but should not Isengard protect us? That was their promise. Yeah. As long as yeah, the sun that's not shines, working out now, is it? Okay. 
You cannot return to Galtrev. I believe the White Hand Overseers will beat me for my lateness or worse. They executed my neighbor for losing an important crate. Okay, I wish to escape, but if the wood does not arrive, they will make an example of someone else. Will I deliver it? Okay. Bring it to King Urien. All right, I can do that. Okay, there was a lot more wood than that that I just recovered, but... Okay. <laughs> All right, here I am carrying a comparatively small quantity of wood, but that's all right. Um, okay, lore question, Matthias. So the lore question is, when elves die, they go to Mandos. Yes, their, their spirits go to Mandos. Does this mean that elves which died before the migration from Lake Quivienen went there ahead of the rest? How about the Sindar and other Moriquendi who died? Do they forcefully get transported to Valinor? Yes. Yes, yes, and yes are the answers to that question. So what happens to the spirits of the elves has nothing to do with whether they're Moriquendi or, or Calaquendi. So, of course, for those of you who are less familiar with the Silmarillion, that means the elves of the darkness or the elves of the light. It essentially just means the elves who went to Valinor and the elves who never went to Valinor. So you've got the some, some of the elves who have been living in Middle-earth their entire lives, and you've got uh, the others... Who, uh, um, who went over to Valinor and some of them returned. Okay, and here's King Urien. There we go. Yep, Fried escaped. They wanted to kill him for his lateness. Well, he was wise not to return. Why do they not defend us when our warriors are gone? What, who, the overseers? Yeah. Yeah, that's the question, indeed. Let's see, what do I want? Tracker's thin brass earring? I think that's what I want. Um, okay. Okay, hang on. Oh, and the search for Leyland. I forgot about that one. Where was this person? This missing person? Lunad worries about a friend who ventured out into Prengwith. Okay. All right. All right, I better talk to Katrin and tell her that Operation... Uh, Operation The Iron Did Not Swim has gone off. Yes, Obscure Old Testament house. reference of the day. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, there's no problem. Yeah, that was very cunning of us. Boy, we are really taking it to him now. Wood from the lumber camp has already been collected and is being stored in the upper village until it can be carted south. Take this torch and burn the wood piles. <laughs> okay, okay. So, burn the wood, burn the piles of wood that I just helped bring into the town. Okay. Oh, uh, hang on. I want a torch. This sounds like fun. Okay, off we go with torch. Ooh, other person with quest. Mary, I see that quest. I will come back down. Um, anyway, okay, so, so, uh, uh, Matthias, back to your lore question. So, uh, yeah. The fact that elves go to Mandos, it's totally independent, whether you lived in Valinor or whether you didn't live in Valinor. It's not about going to Valinor. It's about, you know, the, the halls of awaiting there in, uh, in, in, in Mandos. <clears throat> so, yeah, that is part of the... part of the system. Yeah, bring water. Whoa. You did? Holy cow. I didn't expect you to actually douse it. Let's see. Uh, I'm looking for piles of wood. Oh, those are piles of wood already on fire. Can I just set fire to their pavilions? Where'd it go? Up on this hill over here? Where's the other pile of wood? Oh, there it is. Around the corner. Haha, -ha, it's on fire. Oh man. 
People keep putting out my perfectly good conflagrations. Um, so yeah, so so the spirits. Okay, so because here's the story. The spirits of elves are bound uh, are bound to Middle Earth. They never leave Middle Earth. They will never leave Middle Earth until um, until uh, the until the end of Arda, right? Until until like the end of time, basically. All right. So that was a short-lived and not super effective act of defiance, but. Hey, that's what we're all about here. Undermining the Dragon Clan. Um, let's back up a little bit and talk about the relationship between elves' spirits and their bodies. So, uh, the spirit of an elf, the soul of an elf, is called uh, 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 it's f uh, his or her thea, and the hroa is the body of an elf. Okay, so you've got the thea, and the Hroa. Uh, the Hroa is the body, the Fea is the spirit. Um, now, the the Fea is the essential element of the elf, right? Uh, the Hroa is kind of a manifestation of the of the Fea. <clears throat> so when, the, uh, at death, right, sort of the definition of death is the division of the body and the spirit, right? So the, the Fea is driven away and the body is destroyed. When the Fea leaves the Hroa, when the spirit leaves the body, the spirit doesn't leave Middle Earth, right? Got nowhere to go, right? Uh, and doesn't want to hang out like Oathbreakers in the game, so it goes back to the halls of Mandos. That's Mandos's job is to is to hold the halls where the elves come back, where their spirits return, and the spirits go through a sort of penitential process. It's like it's like purgatory for elves, basically. They go through a cleansing process. Um, you know, where they sometimes get a chance to, like, think over, you know, what they've done and things like that. And, and, and this is one of the reasons why, by the way, Feanor is still there, right? That dude is going to be in Mando's forever. Um, so, again, as I say, this has nothing to do with, like, the location of the body of the elves or whatever. I mean, it's, it's you know, then the elves' body gets buried or, 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 or whatever, you know, the body decomposes. But the elves, again, they don't leave. Eventually, Mandos gives them the green light, right? They're able to weave the halls of Mandos. And when they do, they can return to Valinor. They can go to Elven Home. Um, almost never can they come back to Middle-earth. Indeed, there's only one uh, documented case of an elf who returns out of the halls of Mandos and goes back to Middle-earth, and that's Gorfindel. Um, but, um, but anyway... When they come back out, they can they can basically make a new body for themselves. They're 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 given a new Hroa, um, which again is kind of based on the Thea anyway. So, um, yes, yeah, Phil exactly, yeah, and I think it's uh, uh, I think it's uh, the Archangel Urio who tells Harry Dresden, "You are a soul. You have a body." Um, yeah, exactly, um, and that's that's very much the way it is with the elves there too. Um, so, uh, um, yeah, yeah, um, so, so anyhow, yeah, so, so that's why all, all of the elves go there, no matter what, so that does mean that the elves of Quivianen would definitely have gone to Mandos, and they would have been already waiting there. Finway was the first elf to, uh, be slain in Valinor, right, um, but that just means he was the first one to get killed, right? And the first one to get killed in Valinor. It doesn't mean he was the first elf ever to die by any stretch. So, um, so yeah, the elves of Quivian and like the ones who are hunted down and killed by the Dark Rider would have would would have shown up uh, in Mandos. All right. Wonderful, wonderful. Oh, you are a treat, my new friend. Oh, well, I'm glad you think so. I've been enjoying your company and your rather peculiar ideas of sabotage as well. The Hebog Luth, the Falcon Clan, stands against Saruman, hooray, and seeks to cause trouble for those who side with him. I think you will be a comfort to us and perhaps we to you and yours. Okay, so the Falcon Clan could be an ally. That sounds good. Oh, uh, let's see. What do we have here? Some decent... 
armor, yeah, all right. The clans of Dunlan have a proud history, and none prouder than the Falcon. Okay, weaker clans have forgotten where they came from, forgotten their honor, but not my people. Oh, so the Falcon clan seems an arrogant people, not like the good old stags up north, but... Okay, dangerous press from all sides. Uh, good people live here in Galtrev, and they must be protected. Once you have aided the people of Prengwyd to your satisfaction, go to Tour Morva in Talmathedras. The people of the Falcon will be glad to have your help. Okay, all right, I will do that, but we will indeed finish over here in Galtrev first. Okay. No, wait, there was somebody who had a quest. Oh, yes, it was Mary who had a quest. She's over this way. Nobody up here, right? All right, there's just Lunad, whose quest we haven't finished yet. There she is. Whoa. Okay, man, I can't jump over this wall? What the heck? It's taller over here. Oh, well. I'll go around it again. Okay. Many foul things dwell in the shadows. I fear wolves will be the least of our troubles. Your husband, Tomos, has gone to fight the Dragon Clan alone, huh? He says the White Hand does not do enough to protect Galtrev, so he must do so himself. But he's missing his work while he's gone. They will surely kill him upon his return. Oh, dear. All right, I will look for your husband, Tomos. All right, just touring around to make sure nobody else has a quest that I've missed. Who's over here? As long as the sun shines, you are welcome here. Oh, yeah, no daily wood shipment? No, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, thinking about Elvish, the sort of the peculiar nature of Elvish immortality and... Um, uh, you know, the relationship between elves' spirits and their bodies and what happens to elves when they die. Um, this was a really interesting conversation we were having in the Sim Film Project uh, a few weeks back, as I've been thinking about this a lot lately. Um, Silmarillion Film Project, by the way, is a really fun uh, a really fun program we've been doing now for uh, almost three years. The concept is, is fairly simple. Um, we... Uh, we're, we're talking about the Silmarillion. We're planning out a screen adaptation of the Silmarillion, not like a, um, not like, not as a feature film, but as a, as a, like a, like a Netflix show, basically, uh, 13 one hour episodes per season. And, oh man, I gotta find my way further out of town so I can consult the map. Oh, did you get off the map already, Grifflet? Forget it. Okay. All right, so one is up that way and one's over that way. Let us go to the northerly one first. Okay. Um, so uh, anyway, so the Sim Film Project has been uh, really, really fun. The, the, the whole goal of it, basically, is to go through the Silmarillion and really be thinking about... Um, really be thinking about it in terms of adaptation. So it's totally theoretical. We're not actually making a movie, um, but um, we are doing all of the planning as if we were. So we're planning it out episode by episode, thinking about how are we going to visually depict, um, you know, a lot of these things. And um, it's a wonderful way to just kind of invest yourself imaginatively in the story in ways that, uh, you know, normally... It, it's so easy just to kind of read over things or something will just get mentioned in one sentence or one paragraph in the Silmarillion. But when you really think about, you know, what would that have been like? You know, what um, what's really going on there? It really opens your eyes to some stuff that you never thought about before. So one example of this um, is uh, this question of Elvish mortality. So we were talking about the kinslaying. 
Um, and of course, the kinslaying is a big deal, right? I mean, you know, this is uh, the the Noldor killing the Teleri and stealing their ships as they uh, as they leave Valinor. Um, and uh oh, is that wolf eating something? Oh dear, oh dear, that wolf is eating a mauled corpse. That can't be good. That just can't be good. Um, so, uh, come on, get off him, man. Uh, so in the Kins thing, one of the things that we were... T and again, this is a perfect example of the kind of thing that I never would have thought of um, before I was doing the Silm Film project, was, okay, how did the Teleri react? And on the one hand, it seems like a silly question, right? Like, okay, so, like, your family's just been slaughtered all around you. Like, how do you react, right? It seems like a no-brainer, right? But, but that's a human perspective. How would an elf react when their family members die? Because death doesn't mean the same thing to them. I better attend to this mauled corpse before the, the warg responds too late. Okay, revenge cannot bring back the dead. Not even when you take revenge twice on the same warg. Um, so yeah, here we have, like, this wife mourning over her husband who has been killed by a warg here, apparently. Right? Um, and she's going to be awful sad when she finds out that her husband is dead. Why? Why is she going to be sad when she finds out that her husband is dead? Hey, what's over there? I see a wooden structure. Um, why is she going to be sad when she finds out her husband's dead? Because she's separated from him as far as she knows permanently, right? She's never going to see him again. Um, because when humans die, they go nobody knows whither, right? Um, I don't have anything in my loot bag, do I? Lumber axes. Didn't I chuck all of those? What's up with the lumber axes? I can't loot them. And I already used them. And they're not quest items? I'm so confused. Whatever. Okay. Um, hey, this... What is it? Warg pens. Huh. Well, this makes me wonder... Is there somebody nearby who gives me a quest to come to these places? Because I don't have a quest for this, but I can tell that I would... Well, maybe when I go back and hand in my mauled corpse quest, it will. Uh, Lunid will send me up here. Good to know where the howling caverns are, however. Um, okay. Oh, the notifications? No. No quest stuff here either. Alright, it's fine. Um,. I'm going to head over there and find Tomos now. All right. Um, so, sorry again. So human grief is one thing, right? Because it is like a permanent separation and because of the mystery of like what exactly happens to humans after death. Nobody knows. The humans don't really know for sure. The elves certainly don't know. Um, so, you know, there's the, uh, the, the, Again, as far as you know, when your loved one has died, you've seen them for the last time ever, and that's really sad, right? It's, there's a real loss uh, uh, involved there. But the loss for an elf is different, right? There's, there isn't a loss, not in the same sense. Oops, I fell into the pond. Um, there is not a loss in the same sense for elves as there is for humans, because they're not going to be separated from them forever. For a time, yeah. So you're a Telerian Alcalonde, right? And your wife was killed. Okay, that's sad. Um, 
but where is she now? Her fea, so her proa is lying there in a pool of blood, right? But her fea uh, is down the road in Mandel. Okay, like up the road quite a bit, but it's not right around the corner. And you can't go visit. I don't think they're visiting hours in Mandos, you know? So um, so there's going to be a separation, but it's only for a time. After a while, she'll come out of the halls of Mandos at, with a body, right? Um, and then she'll be changed, probably, but um, but you're, you'll be back together again, right? So it's not a permanent loss. Um, so then how do they react? Do they mourn? Presumably, they don't mourn the same way that humans do. They can't mourn the same way that humans do. Again, it doesn't. It's not. It's not even a separation in the same sense in which it's a separation. Mean, you could say like, oh, the, well, they could be in Mandos for a long time, right? Well, how long? How long? And how long does that even feel, right? So I mean, okay, so maybe you'll be in Mandos for I don't know what, uh, a couple thousand years, right? And so that seems like a big deal. Like, okay, so maybe it doesn't mean you're separated permanently, um, but it it does mean, you know, that you're separated for... Uh, let's see, going this way, right? Yeah. Um, it does mean that you're separated for maybe a few thousand years. That's a big deal. Well, unless you're an elf, in which case, what's a thousand years or a couple thousand years between friends, right? I mean, it's... Again, it's not... It doesn't reduce the impact of death to zero by any means. Um, but it's not just the same. This is one of the things that's been really is it really sort of consistently fun is thinking through these kinds of differences. Tolkien does this on some occasions, but on others, you know, he still really kind of leaves it for us. And that is, um, what is the difference between I'm going to dismount and go stealthy here. Um, what is the difference between human and elvish perspective? We get glimpses of this. We get moments when you can see, um, you know, elves and humans just kind of seeing a situation very differently from the other one. Um, gosh, it's crowded around here. Got Dragon Clan and wolves all over the place, and there you are. Standing out in the open. Okay, no, you're kneeling in the open, but still. Plain to be seen from a distance there, Tomos. Gotta work on stealth. Greetings. Will you remain here long? Okay. The dry gluth can smell the weakness of Galtrev. Okay. Someone must deal with this menace. The White Hand does nothing but force us to labor for a war that does not help us. Okay. Let's see, Tomas, what do you think? Galtrev's yeah, unwelcome neighbors. The Dragon Clan is the bitter enemy of all other clans in Dunland. They are behind the crimes and mischief done in these parts more often than not. Okay. We will fight against the Dragon Clan. It and is not our custom to trust Devodiad, but perhaps you may be of help to me. defeat the chieftain. Okay. That's fine. Oh, man. Random wolf wandered in here. Okay. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Now, so, Phil, I agree that even an elf would notice a few thousand years. They'd notice it. Um, again, I'm not saying, like, and death is no inconvenience at all to elves. I'm just saying it'd be different, right? It wouldn't be the same. Um, it would, yeah. So it just, it's to me a really, uh, a really fascinating um, kind of thought project. How would an elf react uh, when, you know, a close family member dies. Because I think that the answer to that is not obvious. Um, I mean, it's not impossible to, for, to work out either, but it's, but it's definitely not obvious. Um, okay. 
Yeah, Tony, there is that whole thing about reincarnation. Uh, I've never been a big fan of that. For those of you who don't know about this, so um, in uh, the very early days of Tolkien's mythologies, back in the Book of Lost Tales period, for instance, um, Tolkien uh, imagined elves when they after they died being... Oh, he spotted me. Uh, being reincarnated in their descendants. Um, so when an elf returned from Mandos, when their, you know, when their, their Feo was ready to return from Mandos, they would, uh, they would come in. Where is the stupid chieftain? Anyway, I'm going to make sure I'm pointing in the right direction here. Um, yeah, he's over here somewhere. Um, so yeah, so when, so in the old days, when an elf is going to return from Mandos, he returns, he is reincarnated in one of his descendants. So an elf becomes, you know, his own great grandson, for instance. Um, and that always seemed a little bit weird to me. Um, I mean, I've made this joke a bunch of times, but it just, it just, you know, it kind of makes you think about it, right? You know, imagine how strange it would be to be the elvish couple that has a baby, right? Uh, and they're looking at the, you know, the, the elvish father holding his newborn son in his arms and saying, hey, it's grandpa, right? I mean, that's, I can't help but find that a little strange. Okay, all right. I found the chief. He's the clan chief of the whole clan? Oh, man, he spotted me, so I couldn't burgle him. See, Tony... I hear that, and Tony says, and he doesn't mind that since many humans, you know, kind of think that way about their ancestors, but there's a difference. There's a difference between the way that that works in, you know, a, a, a culture that uh, uh, does believe in reincarnation and, and, uh, uh, and ancestor worship and things like that. It's, that's different from, the, like, the elves have a different relationship with it, you know? I mean, they, um... It's not just we believe that our ancestors will return and be reincarnated in their descendants. Um... You know, I believe that you know, uh... my ancestors shall be born again, you know, in me and my children... There's a big difference between that and this is the soul of a person that I once knew. Like, this baby that I am holding in my arms is the spirit of my grandfather that I spent 10,000 years with, right? Um, so that when your baby is, you know, teething and stuff, you're like, teething your grandfather, right? Like, it's not just like, and our ancestors shall be born in us again, or, you know, and we shall partake of their strength, or I think, but like, literally, you already know each other, because you retain memories from your previous life, so uh, you know, as an elf. So again, it's like what, when he's in, so, like, your kid is in elementary school, except he has your grandfather's memories, and you have your memories of of them, so that, that's the thing that I find strange about it. It's not just the whole reincarnation is, you know, it's not just a reincarnation is weird thing. It's a, from a story perspective, I have a really hard time putting myself into that whole mindset, you know, where any of that would kind of make sense. Um, yeah, and I, it, it would depend on whether they recognize their ancestors post purgatory, but I. Th Given the way that he describes it and sort of the nature of, uh, you know, elvish immortality and, um, 
in souls i i think that they do i think that they would um and so yeah that makes it kind of weird all right the oak we rod requires us to give welcome to devodion okay you were like me once but now you must watch from your hiding place huh okay um just looking at the time here. Okay, we're good. Um, Alright. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, sorry. Okay. What were we talking about, Tomos, there? These foes would have overwhelmed you. Right? It's okay. You're fine. You just sit on the sidelines. I have like bad news to bring. You bring home to one wife already. As long as you do not trouble us. The head of the dragon has been severed. I'm worth a hundred white hand. I thought you were saying yeah, I was worth a hundred white hands. I was gonna say, well, that's great. You see how wrong all of this is. Saruman offered his friendship, but this friendship only forces my people into brutal labor and leaves them to be harmed by their enemies. Absolutely. Preach it, Tomos. Something must be done. This cannot be born. I agree. Okay. Good. What next? Have need of help on occasion. I have shown you what a true alliance should be, and what Saruman has offered is no alliance. He has stolen our warriors and made us slaves. It is clear that the people of Dunland are nothing to him but thralls. Yeah. You're going to demand a fair alliance? Yeah, let's do that. Let's go stir stuff up in Galtrev. I'm so ready. The people of Galtrev have formed an alliance with the White Hand, for Isengard has vowed friendship in return for assistance with its war effort. But the people left behind in the hands of Saruman's minions are little more than slaves in this new era. That's right. Little more than slaves. We're not going to stand for that anymore, are we, Tomos? Your people are ready to be free of this burden. Okay. First, let's find your wife. Okay, right. I don't know where she is. Oh, so do you, apparently. Or at least you're moving very assertively. Okay, oh, oh, this way. Right, gotcha. Okay, right, there's the stable master. All the other people are gone, so I'm a little disoriented, so I'm glad you're here, Tomos. Hey, there she is! See, she was waiting for you. She was upset before. What have you done? Oh, man, he's in trouble. Um, we've driven away the threat. What of the white hand... That's right, the overseers are going to come after you, Tomos. Don't cry, Mary. We'll take him out. What have we done? We are not free. Yes, the alliance was not a good idea. We are slaves. Uh-oh, here comes one. That's right. We're going to give these overseers what for? Here comes a bunch of workers. <clears throat> Two little mongrels went rogue today and missed their day's work. <clears throat> oh, me? Okay. Didn't realize I was on your list. I never signed anything with a with the white hand. You've had it with us. I've about had it with overseers. We are not the slaves of Saruman. That's right. He, they talked about alliance, but it's actually been slavery. Okay. White Hand Overseer has been defeated. 
Oh, good. See more people are coming. Gethin and Rianu and Wuna. That's right. Stop making spears, Wuna. Stop building models. We're rallying the... F See, this is much better than just throwing axes in the lake. The Alliance is nothing but enslavement for our people. Cast off the yoke of Isengard. Free yourselves from your oppressors. That's right. Down with the white hand. Oh. I'll pay for insolence, huh? I don't think so. My insolence. Oh, it's Flint Ironheart. Oh, hey, you asked me to show you my methods for motivating folks. What do you think of this so far? Okay, oh, we got another one now. Oh, Flint ran away. I'll pay for this. Where'd he go? Hey, guys. Okay, so stop beating up on Tomos. I got you. Hey, don't get the cows. It's time. Time for the bovine assault while we have them distracted here in the square. Oh, that worker is actually tanking him, not even Tomos. Um, yeah, Tony, go ahead. If you've got another lore question, we can probably do another short one. All right. Okay, given Tolkien's Catholic faith, what do you think he would say was the role of the Valar in modern times? Um, the same as it ever was. So, because the Valar are basically planetary intelligences, right? So, now, of course, keep in mind, uh, you know, some people talk like Tolkien really believed in the Valar. He knew that his stories were not real. But at the same time, he based the, you know, the concept of his mythology, you know, he made up relatively little of it out of whole cloth, right? It's based on a lot of things. Um, so the Valar are essentially like, plan they're not the same as planetary intelligences, but they're like, um, uh, they're like planetary intelligences. Um so, um, um, anyway, uh, the concept of planetary intelligences is basically that there is an, a high angelic order, um, in the kind of angelic hierarchy, but higher up, you know, much higher up than the kinds of angels who come down delivering messages to folks like, hey, congratulations, Virgin Mary, you're pregnant. Um, the uh, these hi these higher angelic beings, their job is to basically sort of enact the will of God in the world. So like they're the instruments of fate. So they make stuff happen. They influence the world in different ways, and they are in control of a bunch of stuff that occurs, kind of like the Valar are. So I mean, the Valar are sim. They're not the same as planetary intelligences, but they're similar to planetary intelligences, um, or like Eldila, if you know C.S. Lewis's space trilogy. Um, so that that concept of there being an angelic order to whom is delegated sort of oversight of the world by God, that's a that's a, a an idea which is a sort of a traditional idea, certainly within the the Catholic tradition. Um, and that would seem to the Valar would seem to fit fairly comfortably within that uh, that definition without you know w within that concept without you know, too much remainder. Okay. Um, ex yeah, uh, the Oyarsa 
uh, Phil, exactly. The Eldila is the general category, uh, the Oyarsa of the different planets. Um, yes, in, in, in C.S. Lewis, that's exactly it. I have heard the wails of the poofball in the night. Okay. Hey, you're welcome for helping. Right, we stood up to the injustices of Isengard. That is great. We threw off the overseers. I think we got them all. First, second, third, Flint, Firefoot, or whatever his name was. Ironheart. No, Flint, Firefoot is from Dragonlance, isn't he? Totally different. Uh, we are safe, even if only for a short time. Hey, no problem. Bring on the retribution. We'll take him out, too. Oof. Wow. Thomas, that's a big question. How does Tolkien's conception of fairy or elves change over time? And how does that compare to the traditional conceptions of fairy seen in Sir Gowan and the Green Knight and traditional modern conceptions like that in Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell? Wow. Okay. Um, hey, look. Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. Uh, on the pile right behind my computer that I put my phone up on when I'm doing Twitter Live. Um, okay. Where am I? Oh, crafting hall. Right. Okay. Um, oh, I supposed to go back to Mary. Right. Um, anyway. All right. That is a really big question. It can't be answered any time, like, completely in full. But maybe we can take a stab at it. Now I'm just kind of debating, do I have enough time even to begin taking a stab at this question? Sleep often escapes me, for the night shadows bring fear. Okay, she's worried about Saruman's retaliation. All right, let me just check and make sure. I think this is that. What quest there? Oh, you're right. It's bronze quest. No, we're good. And who's up here? Envis! Your shiny ball is gone. It was a gift from your father before he went away to battle the straw heads. You would give anything to find it, but it does not seem to be anywhere you look. Ask around. Ask the other kids where your shiny ball is. Okay. I'll... Ask around. Your shiny ball. Oh, man. They're looking for kids' toys. Um, a couple more things as here. As long as the sun shines, you are welcome here. We have a ritual here, and it involves hunting the wolves that stalk the trees of Penguith. Okay. All right. The hunt cannot be as frequent when the best of our warriors have left us for the war. Okay, so you just want me to kill a bunch of wolves. All right. I could probably arrange that. How about you? Many foul things dwell in the shadows. I fear wolves will be that. There is a fabled troubles. monstrous boar, and he is known as Big Blood Tusk. <laughs> okay. He's been fathering many of the wild boars that roam uh, Prengwith over the years, and now they pose a serious threat. All right. Hunt the Blood Tusk family of boars. So, common forest boars. Okay, and bring back their meat. All right. I don't suppose you've seen a, a kid's ball, however. Okay. 
I'll keep... Where's the other kid here? Oh! There you are! Mive. Sure, you looked at it, but you didn't take it. You want to play with spears, not useless shiny toys. Okay, you were my only suspect, Mive. Hmm, okay. Um. So, Tom, remind me. I'll do. I'll do the. I'll do the. I'm not. I'm not trying to duck the Elvish fairy question. But it is a big. Ooh, hi, Lunad. Yeah, bad news about your husband. I have not seen your kind before. Yeah, there are totally wargs there. Yeah. Your friend. He's not your husband. Your friend. But still. As long as the sun shines, you are welcome here. Okay, you sent one of our last remaining scouts out to see if he can discover where that warg may have come from. Okay. All right, so I'm supposed to kill wolves. I'm supposed to kill wargs. I'm supposed to kill boars. I'm supposed to find some kid who might know. Oh, I've got to go up there, huh? Okay, fine. Um. Oh. <laughs> Nitesh says, I bet the answer involves how to how Tolkien often referred to the elves once upon a time as gnomes. Yeah, yeah, it was it was it was the Noldor specifically who were gnomes, and it was, it's you know it's it's funny. This is one of those moments where, it's not that Tolkien is oblivious because he's not oblivious, but where he can kind of fool himself a little bit, you know. That is to say, he. Uh, he wanted to, like, he was using the word gnome to describe the Noldor because he was going on the, like, the associations of that phrase with, um, with wisdom, right? Gnome, gnomes, the wise ones. So he's banking on the wisdom thing. Uh, but, of course, people are going to be thinking of, like, garden gnomes now, but, you know, the, the the much more modern view of gnomes, you know, the idea of gnomes as the little subterranean creatures. I say more modern because that's only been around since the 16th century. Um, you know, he he's just basically sort of tried to resist that. You know, I'll use the word gnome despite the fact that it has these other associations, so I'll just ask you to ignore those associations and I'll redefine the word uh, in this way. Um, he does that, but, um, you know, and he does that successfully sometimes, as for instance, with elves and even fairies to some extent. Um, but it doesn't work with gnomes, so he eventually gives up on gnomes. You're welcome here, as long as you don't trouble us. You saw a crow taking off with just such a ball. Okay, a blackbird flying off the shiny object heading northwest. So now I have to search all of the crows of the northwest of Dunland to find the shiny ball. Okay, fine. Yeah, good. All right. All right so I'm watching the clock today because I have to leave. Uh, make sure I leave right on time today. I've got to get my kids a little bit early today. So I think we can leave town. All right. Actually, maybe I will. Oh, wait, hang on. Just missed the turn. Um. <clears throat> Maybe I'll stop before I get out into the woods. This is a 
a reasonably good stopping place right here. I just picked up a few new quests. I'm about to head out and do them. Try to help, to continue to help liberate and strengthen the folks of Galtrev so that they can resist the Dragon Clan. I'm going to st strengthen the Dunlending so that they don't go to war against the Rohirrim. Um, okay. Yeah. No, yeah, why don't I... Why don't, I know I'm stopping a little bit early today, but well, I think I should stop. I, I, I do want to make sure I can get my kids on time today. Um, I will be back next week. Next week is the 10th, so I will be here next week. I will be away uh, for, well, at least one week. I, I will be um, not available on the 17th, so I won't be here then. Um, we'll see about the day after Thanksgiving. Um, I may be available the day after Thanksgiving, so I might do my normal slot then. I'm not sure. I don't know what family plans are, so we'll see. We'll see if family plans allow it, but uh, there's a chance I might just be hanging out and so be able to... Uh, I don't do a lot of shopping the day after Thanksgiving, so... Um, uh, so, yeah, I think uh, Grifflet will stay here among his uh, bovine conspirators and uh, we'll pick back up next week. Thanks a lot, everybody, for joining me today um, and uh, have a good weekend. And I look forward to seeing you guys again next week. Thanks, everybody. Bye now. Thanks for joining in on my rambles around Standing Stone's brilliant digital adaptation of Tolkien's world. If you enjoy these adventures, please consider supporting this and other entertaining educational programming by donating at signumuniversity.org fund.